Speed Green. Are you an ultimate Eagles football fan? Well, you're in the right place. Well, you're in the right place. (laughs) This is Birds 365. Hosted by the new Mac and Mac, Jody McDonald and John McMullen. Here we go, here we go. Who collectively have covered and talked about more than 50 plus years of Eagles football. Kick off your day with Birds 365. You'll get debate. We love to argue. You'll get the real story from inside the locker room. And you'll hear from some of the great football minds from around the region. You're about to become an Eagles insider. Get in the game. Join Jody Mack and Johnny Mack and join the football community that flocks to Birds 365. Birds 365 starts right now. Welcome to the NFL. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! And a good morning, Eagles fans. How are you today? A Tuesday gathering here on Birds 365, show number 301. We had a uh, milestone yes. yesterday at 300. Here come the next 300 coming your way, hopefully over the next year. Uh, McMullen and McDonald will be part of your morning routine. Thank you for streaming in with us. Uh, J-Mac, I sent you a text yesterday asking you if you saw, found out, got information any which way you were able to do so uh, that gave further details on the contract that uh, Chris uh, Tart signed with the Eagles. If you could uh, hit me up with it pretty quick, because I was on WIP last night. I thought maybe something would leak out last night. It did not, correct? No, I I have not seen anything. I texted a few people. It was uh, Juneteenth yesterday, so the league was uh, closed and uh, they took the day off as well. So generally these things tend to leak out when they get filed with the union. Uh, So yesterday is not a business day. It was very unlikely to happen. Um, We should get it sometime this week. Um, We'll see, you know, how much I I think it is going to be an interesting contract because you know, I've talked about it. The timing tells you it's not going to be big money, um, but there is room for at least incentives that can make it a little bit more palatable for a veteran player that's kind of proven himself. Uh, so this one is kind of interesting to me. You know, it's not going to be ten million like uh, uh, James, James Bradbury, Bradbury, but but you have this uh, weird disconnect. You have this group of saying, "Oh, this is a pretty good player." So I'm I'm thinking to myself. You know, when I first saw it, as you know, I said, I'm thinking better in minimum, you know, this late on the calendar, all that kind of stuff. And then there's other people that say, this is a pretty good player. And, you know, is he holding out for something um, similar to what Steve Nelson did last year and just saying, you know what, I'm not going to do this. I'll wait and wait and wait. Maybe he's going to wait for an injury in training camp. So maybe the Eagles went a little bit higher than I expected. So this one's going to be kind of interesting to me, and I think it'll tell you a lot of what they think of the player. You know, we we had some listeners going over, but this is one of the best cover safeties in football. I like I'm not a Jaquaski Tart expert, but one of the best covered safeties in football is not available on June 17th for one year, Jody. Simple, it doesn't exist. All right. That- um, God, so you have this weird disconnect, and I, I'm I'm pretty interested to see what the numbers are. As am I. That's why I asked you. Listen, if you if you see anything, you might catch it before me. Please do me a favor and just shoot me a text uh, wherever you got it and what the numbers are going to be because I'm with you. I'm very interested to see what kind of deal it is. Uh, I would be willing to bet good money it's just a one-year deal uh that it's not going to be a multi-year deal the question is how much is in there how much are incentives that can be reached won't be reached and the like and you're right to point to steven nelson last year who i believe correct me if i'm wrong ended up getting five million for one season last year 
but that's what they got him for, and they got him for right before even later in the calendar year. They signed him in July of last year. So it's not impossible that a guy can still get uh, multi-millions of dollars, but at this stage, you almost never see a guy get a multi-year deal. So we're looking at one year. The question is how much. That's why I'm bringing this up. Um, you and I get a chance to uh, get uh, opinions on our opinions. We come on here on Birds 365, say what we're going to say. Uh, I get a chance to uh, share my opinions on WIP as well. And the last couple of days, I've just gotten beat up left and right for my opinion on two moves in Philadelphia. One doesn't concern us much here on Birds 365. That's a John Tortorella signing as the new coach of the Flyers. And the other one is the Jaquiski Tart signing. And I'm not wowed by either one. I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, my God, did they screw up by making this move? I don't know that. I don't believe that. But uh, the fact that you in any way, shape, or form question, John, I've been in this town for a long time, 30-plus years, and it used to be that the fans were tougher on the teams, that the team's not doing it out there, a small market mentality, blah, 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 blah. Now it's become, for me, more a questioning of the media who generate opinions. Maybe it's because of social media that people can just shoot out a tweet to anything that you tweet in response. We here on Birds 365, of course, have our comment section, and we love our commenters, but some of them of late have not only been nasty, uh, but just, (laughs) in my opinion, way over the top in their evaluation of certain players that have come here. Uh, I didn't know this town had become a root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame town. Yeah, I I noticed that. I've talked about it uh, a lot more. People, I I never I hate to throw everybody in the same bucket because I don't think they are. But no, I think there's some that still value objective opinion. But I I think that the group that doesn't, the group that um, thinks, you know, I can't tell you how many times. I get criticism from people outside of Philadelphia for being an Eagles fan because I cover the Eagles. Uh, In other words, they think I'm an Eagles fan because I, I cover the team that, and these are people from Dallas and the giants. When I say something bad about the giants, for instance, which I've said plenty in this off season, You'll get the Giants fan. So Eagles, Eagles. I'm like, I, you know, I don't You're just care. an Eagle fan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I get that from from outside, and then inside. Yeah, I mean, they're they're the the group that expects cheerleaders and and wants cheerleaders has grown and it continues to grow. It really has, and it's depressing. It's depressing for me um, because that's not our job. And I, I think, you know, if, if it ever came to the point where it was just all cheerleaders, I think people would actually really dislike it. Um, but I, I don't know how to stop it uh, other than just do my job the way I usually do my job. And that's give honest opinions on, on what you think. And there's always players. I always find it interesting. The players that, the fan base latches on to and just overrates to a ludicrous degree. And then there are other players who they just dislike to, uh, 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 you know, almost an extreme, you know, i like to call them wing nuts in politics. You got the right and the left wing, just wing nuts. And you have fans that are just like, and I always use Miles Sanders as an example for one end of the spectrum. Good player, but early in his career, not necessarily now, but certainly after his rookie season, you know, I use that term all the time, Jody. You're probably sick of it, skipping steps. They skipped a bunch of steps with Miles Sanders. Remember, this is one of the best running backs in football. Was never close, Was is not close. He's not in that category. It's not an insult. He's He's a good player. It's a good, solid player. It's not an insult. It's just he's, he doesn't belong in the conversation with the best backs in the NFL, and I think people have seen that. And then there's other guys like poor Nate Gary, who th- this fan base just 
I I once put his pro football focus grade up on tw- on Twitter one year, which was pretty good early in the season, and at, at the time, and and people just went nuts. I, it's not even my opinion; it's somebody else's opinion. Hey, you're just and, passing along someone yeah. else's opinion, and and they just went just ballistic because for whatever reason. Uh, Nate and and Nate was a hard worker, and the coaching staff liked him. And every time, anytime I said Ken Flajol, if you remember his quote about uh, high speed internet, he was so smart. He's smarter than him, and blah blah blah. And if you put that on there, they're like, they just lost their minds. I I I I, I don't understand it, but you have that dichotomy. But the cheerleader aspect is is depressing to me, Jody. It it is literally depressing to me and, and maybe it became that. maybe it became more obvious to me because of the last two eagle acquisitions both of them defensive backs you know i talked up james bradbury to the eagles when he was still on the giants because the reporting was out there they are gonna they're trying to trade him they are way over the cap they can't sign their rookies they've got to make cap room before the draft happens but before they start signing their drafted players. And I believe that that reporting, and I got a couple of giant buddies. So I said, listen, are they going to be able to trade him? Are they going to release him? Is this really what the giants are going to do? Cause I like the player a lot. He's one year removed. They were a bad defense last year. The giants were right there with the Eagles with not getting pressure on the quarterback. I thought Bradbury was still one of the better cornerbacks in the national football league. And guys like him just don't become available at the time of year that he did. It doesn't happen that way. So I was all over James Bradbury leading up to it. As soon as he gets released, within days the Eagles get the deal done, get him signed. I was truly excited about that signing for the Philadelphia Eagles. The flip side would be, why would anybody release a player that's as good as you're saying, Jody? How does a guy, doesn't this mean that he's really not all that good? Aren't you blatantly overrating him? Because I was very big behind the signing. I didn't get any of those. No, Nobody came on and said, Jody, there's a reason why he's released. He's not as good as you're saying he is. We want a giant play? You kidding me? We want a guy who just came for the giant? Screw the giant. That's what I used to get from Philadelphia fans when I would – go overboard and singing a guy's praises, a move made by Howie Rose. It's Howie Roseman. It can't be right because it's Howie Roseman. We used to get a lot more of that than the responses that I got yesterday and uh, starting on, on Sunday on WIP about Jaquiski Tart. The guy is probably not going to start. There's a reason why they brought Anthony Harris back first. Jaquiski Tart was available when Anthony Harris resigned, right, John? Yes, yes. yes but they chose to resign Anthony Harris. Yeah. And then they waited and waited and waited and waited and then signed just Quisky Tart. So if you tell, oh, he's going to definitely start on Anthony Harris. I don't know that. And for the last several months here on Birds 365, we've been talking about, you know, the Eagles like Marcus Epps better than the fan base likes Marcus Epps. They oh, yeah. like, they're going to start. There's Marcus another guy. Epps. I should have brought up Marcus Epps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you keep saying that if someone's going to be removed from the starting lineup, it's more likely going to be Harris than Epps. I don't think either one of them's coming out for Jaquiski Tart. I think that's the Eagles hope. Um, I think, and that's how we described it yesterday. I think this is an insurance policy. I think it'll be a legitimate competition in the summer. But I think if the Eagles had their druthers, um, Anthony Harris and Marcus Epps would be starting and Kayvon Wallace would all of a sudden show uh, a spark of, 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 you know, the ability, the fan base. There's another guy who should have brought up Kayvon Wallace. They're skipping steps on him. Um, you know, hopefully he can turn into the third safety. And then maybe – uh, Joukowsky Tart turns into uh, Jonathan Cyprian, as I said, and you say, hey, thanks for the memories. Uh, we're going to move in a different direction because once you get down to the four safety, then you start talking about special teams. And that's where Andre Saturé is more valuable. Jared Maiden, if he could push him being on a special teams player. Um, so I, I said when the signing happened, he might be starting on September 11th, and he might be cut by. He might not even be in in Detroit on September 11th. But you know, 
he signed three contracts, Jody, right? In in San Francisco. So that's pretty good as a player. You give him credit for that. Uh, his rookie deal, obviously, is a second round pick, which is slotted. Then he got an extension, a two years, 13 million extension, uh, 2018, uh, uh, after 2018. So 2019 and 2020. And you say, okay, the 49ers like him. Um, then the third contract, one-year deal, veteran minimum. One year, $1.127 million. The 49ers brought him back. Now, this time, they didn't bring him back. They said, well, we're going to go in a different direction. Last year, they brought him back, the team that knows him the best, right. at the veteran minimum. That's why I said it's probably going to be the veteran minimum. Then I got all these people coming out of the woodwork saying, oh, this is a good player. This is good. This is good. Well, why the heck is he getting the better and million better and minim, minimum from the 49ers last year? And then they don't want to bring him back. And and that's a pretty good defense. And he's had success for them. And he started 64 games. I mean, people got to think this out. If June and 17, that's why the devil is going to be in the details of the contract when they eventually do like leak out. And uh, forgive me for re repeating, because I know we've talked about this before here on Birch 365. It almost always leaks out within 24 hours of an agreement. Yeah, Why? From the the agents want it out there. Yeah. They want to show that they did the right thing for their clients or for future clients. Look at a deal that I got for player X. We almost always get the details. We're now four days since it first uh, leaked out that at least he was signing with the Philadelphia Eagles. There's a reason why we don't know the details yet. Cause the deal is not that good. The agent doesn't need the details on this contract out Cause it doesn't make him look all that good. Cause he probably signed for the veteran minimum. So if the 49ers weren't even willing to offer him the veteran minimum, if he was moved enough to sign a veteran minimum contract last year, it tells you he likes the team. He likes where he was living. He didn't want to get up and move. Maybe someone else may offer him slightly more. And he said, no, for that kind of an increase, I'm better off staying here with San Francisco. Good team. Know the system. My coaches like me. He, You would think that he at least would have that on the table this year, right? Apparently not, because otherwise he would be back with the 49ers already. I, I don't get it. You, it, with The way some people are talking about this in the fan base, Eagle Nation, you think that they'd re-sign Brian Dawkins. Yeah. Or that Malcolm Jenkins part due is going to happen here. In I'm, I'm thinking I'm San Francisco. I'm thinking they got Ronnie Lott. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't get it. But, I mean, people are hyped up. That's great. That's what the offseason is for, expectations. And, look, I think this Eagles uh, defense is vastly improved. But I think it's going to be vastly improved because of guys like Jordan Davis, uh, Hassan Reddick, uh, maybe Nicobe Dean in the second half of the season can uh, show up and start to be the player he was at Georgia. James Bradbury, as he mentioned, Jody. Those are the, the potential difference makers uh, that the Eagles added. Can't have a superstar at every position. This is about uh, getting a capable player at safety, as is ha Anthony Harris, for that matter. Um, and you have an insurance policy, you know. All right, who's better? You know, let them compete. Who's got more left in the tank? Right, because injuries are going to happen. And then before you know it, you've got your guy coming off the bench and you're going to have to ask him to come in and hold down the fourth. So it's a good signing, smart signing. Howie Roseman doing Howie Roseman things, getting a veteran guy who's been starting for a good team for an inexpensive price. That's a good deal. But listen to some Eagle fans either on my phone lines on WIP, on my Twitter, or here on our uh, comment feed on Birds 365. A Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famer, Jaquiski Tart, joining the Philadelphia Eagles. So we'll see about that. All right, uh, we're going to get our first time out of the day in. You got McMullen and McDonald, your Mac and Mac Birds 365 guys. We will be joined by one Chris Franklin from NJ.com. He's next here on Birds 365. Go for the polls and the pools. Go for the ooze. And the Oz. Go for the bubbles. And the bubbly. Go for the story. 
and the stories. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Seven, zero, three. One, two, three. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass. Free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. News, we cherish every moment, and it's our profound responsibility to bring you closer to your world. Never miss a moment. Trust the people at Action News. All right, did you know I was the mommy slam dunk champion? Really? <laughs> yes, really, don't sound so surprised. Let's see it. Oh, you're ready. All right, here we go. Let's hear the crowd. So go to right, I go to left, got fake a mama. Mama, go up, mama! She did it. Again, you can't avoid gravity, but United Healthcare can help you avoid financial surprises by helping you compare costs and doctor quality ratings. United Healthcare. Uh huh. Go for the midnight tears. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Appreciate you being part of a Tuesday edition, a summer solstice edition of Birds 365. You got McDonald and McMullen hanging with you. We got Chris Franklin joining with us. Chris Franklin, summer solstice, longest day of the year. After you finish up with us today, you're going to have like 12 more hours of uh, light out before the sun goes down. What are you going to do to celebrate the summer solstice? Well, this is my first day back from vacation, so oh, I'm wow. going to have to be. Tra- yeah, I'm so I'm tra- well, sick half of it, so that's fun. But uh, afterwards, uh, we're going to go out there, and I don't. I'll probably get the uh, I have these little beach chairs in the back of my car, and so I'm probably sitting in the middle of an office complex, a weird guy with a laptop <laughs> looking around that way. So that's probably what I'm doing. <laughs> well, Good hopefully you. you're not by the wildfire in Mullica Hill. Uh, that thing looks nasty. Uh, thankfully no we're we're far enough we're far far away from that but knowing that eric i used to actually in another time ago like used to cover like the one of the new side would cover that stuff and medford and all that stuff and see all it thankfully so far away from that some of that stuff but that thing is i think it's, it's the fire that won't end it's, it's yeah. crazy i thought maybe we'd see uh at c franklin news i thought we'd maybe see the comeback like well, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, it might have to break out some, not all here, no, I'm not, but, uh, you know, it's, all, <laughs> it's, it's every other year, Mullica Hill, since like 2019, there was a, was a weak tornado. 2020 yeah, tornado, so, yeah. Yeah, 2021, you had that big three that went past this office, and then now it's, it, it's an off year. So, you know, fires or whatever, hurricanes, I'm, I'm available for this year. Didn't that yeah. tornado, I think it, it, it really damaged Lewis Reddick's house, uh, uh, which was... Um, damaged a lot of people's houses but obviously a lot of eagles live down down that way it's a nice area yeah it is nice it's nice and quiet so when all of a sudden you hear like a train sound and you start looking outside it, it kind of sounds like wait, wait what's it oh wait this is not a movie or nothing like that coming back that thing was yeah, just I, surreal uh, i thought surreal. maybe the fire was caused by the philadelphia eagles because they were on fire with the arts <laughs> Ronnie Lott, baby. Ronnie yeah. Lott. I don't because you were on vacation, Chris. So I didn't I don't know if you knew 
but the Eagles signed the reincarnation of Ronnie Lott, evidently. <laughs> uh, is is, is uh, Tark going to have all of his fingers and nothing's going to be messed up with this one? Because if he does, <laughs> I think he could be helpful when it comes there. But I thought, yeah, he's well, even better now that you bring that up. He's got all his fingers, so in theory, he's better. He should be better than Ronnie Lott. Yeah. Um, we kid because we care and because we believe it. Um, and we've gotten some response because both John and I have been lukewarm about the Jakiski Tart signing. Um, do you even think he's a lock to start here? Do you think it's going to be a competition between the guys already on the roster at the safety position? What was your first reaction when you heard Eagles got a uh, veteran like Jakiski Tart to sign and join the safety room? When I first thought her Tart. I automatically went to like the one of four years ago, but then I started thinking like, all right, let me look back and look at the film a little bit. I think the signing is going to wind up being looking like a Will Parks esque type deal when it's all said and done, and that's not putting anything. I've already forgotten about Will Parks, Uh, and that was only like a couple years ago. Oh, Chris, now I feel bad because I brought up Corey Graham. I brought up Andrew Sendejo. I brought up Jonathan Cyprian. I brought up Andrew Adams, and I forgot about Will Parks. I want to Don't punch I. myself. Shame on me. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's the thing is, it's, it's not a knock against because I like Will Parks back when he was with the Broncos. I think he's more of a big nickel guy when you bring him in here. I, I think it's more Anthony Harris insurance, more than Marcus Epps, because the style yeah. he plays. And this he, this team, the one thing, if you look at the secondary, secondary, the one this team needs a deterrent in the middle of the field, somebody that receivers are going to have to worry about going – well, a tight especially. Oh, that guy's lingering around. I don't want to get hit and start thinking second thoughts, though. If he brings that element as well as some cover stuff and some help in the run stop, then I think it's fine for what it is. If you're going to have to rely on him to be your main guy as a, str- a strong safety, then that's why I start to think, well, at this point where he's at right now, that's why I have a few questions about that. Do you think um, contract-wise, I'm thinking veteran minimum, do you think – uh, Tart gets any more than that is this because that tells you a lot I mean look if you're we had some people say this is one of the best covered safeties in the NFL bottom line is if you're one of the best co- covered safeties in the NFL you're not on the market on June 17th Chris I mean that's just the way it works um, if it's one year better in minimum um he could be starting September 11th in Detroit. He could be Will Parks and off the team or Jonathan Cyprian or Andrew Adams and off the team. Um, which would you lean towards uh, starting off the team if you're a betting man? Who I'm a betting man? Well, now, after saying all that, I probably leave starting after that because I think he's going to well, find I said I, I, I said the same thing. I'm 50-50, basically. But I think he's got a good chance to start. But again, I'd be at probably 25% or so that he might not even be on the team. That's that's the weird dichotomy because he's not going to be a fourth safety, right? If Kayvon Wallace finally, if the light turns on there, then you want a special teams guy. So you want Andre Sachere or Jared Maiden. Chipkowski Tart's not going to play special teams, so... That's the weird disconnect, the weird dichotomy you have. He might be starting. He might be off the team by September 11th. It's, like, it's really crazy. Like, I can see it being like a $1.5 million with like an escalator. Like, if you start this many games and yeah, you have this many tackles, it goes up to maybe four or five, maybe. But getting back to your thing, I just think I, I look at the everything else they have and look at that secondary, and you look at what they could potentially have in a safety position – Kayvon, for me, Kayvon Wallace, I like the guy personally. I like what he could potentially bring. Like, Tart, Kayvon Wallace is what Tart is. Tart is what Kayvon Wallace should be at this point right now. He should be a guy that sees his field regularly. That guy, that physical presence as well, too, because he's a better physical safety, I think, as a cover guy. But we haven't seen that leap yet. And I think it's, when you look at this, if I think it's more if, if Wallace doesn't do well, given that all the other investments that this team has made on the defense side and offensive side and the, and the expectations are basically putting themselves in now i think this is one of those things where they have to be like you know what? we're going to go for it this year and see what we can do especially in a weaker nfc as opposed to and so this could be a time where you maybe see Kayvon Wallace go eh, 
maybe they let him go in, in the future. You never, you know, it's, it's tough to see that, but I, I, I'm, for me, I'm, I'm a little concerned about Kevon Wallace and where he's at currently right now in his, in, in his uh, projection. Chris, uh, like you mentioned, uh, had a little downtime. Good for you. Uh, so I don't think we've uh, had you on since the Eagles finished up all their offseason work. Because we blinked and we missed most of it. And <laughs> I, I, I've been a little bit more hard on the Eagles than some other people because they've chosen this less is more way of handling the offseason. And yeah, they didn't have any major injuries. So they, they won that battle. Uh, but are they actually ready for a training camp to pre- uh, prep and be in there? You got to give the Eagles at least this much. At least they didn't get fined. At least they didn't lose any potential practices for next year, which the Giants did, which the Commanders did, the Houston Texans did too, but people don't care all that much about them here in town. Um, I don't know if what the Eagles did this offseason was right, wrong, or indifferent, but other teams being fined for two physical practices, for running drills you're not supposed to run. Who, Who are the NFL police, Chris? Who's turning these teams in so that they're incurring these fines from the league? The Eagles didn't have to sweat it because they didn't do near enough, but two teams within their division did get penalized for going a little hard during preseason, uh, during offseason. Who's ratting people out here, frankly? <laughs> I, I have my, my sources up now. Okay, I don't know, but I, I I don't know how these teams think they can they can get away with it now. You have ninety guys. I was like, somebody's going to tell somebody, oh, well, today we did 7-7. And then also, I wouldn't be surprised if the NFL like, peeks in on a couple of streams going, huh, what's going on in this play? What's going on here yeah. to monitor it? So I put this more on the coaches because that's why they're getting fined because you can't get away with stuff like this. You can't – to me, it's more of a, it's a preparation thing. If you have a coach that's going rogue going, you know what, let's go have the Oklahoma drill over there. Nobody's going to see this. Wink, wink. And the coach is just like, la, 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 la. Deserves to get fined. And I just don't understand – why is still continuing to happen? If you saw the first fine, you saw if I'm Mike McCarthy or if I'm Ron Rivera, I saw the other person get fined. Like, you know, guys, maybe you should watch this a little bit. Tell these guys to stop it, or we're going to personally find the play. It, it, it's asinine to me, to me, and I don't understand how it continues to happen over and over again. I mean, if if the league can go look in a meeting room and see the Denver Broncos and go on like, or no, sorry, Minnesota, whatever team it was that was sitting around too no, close because we want to be all yeah, together. Denver. Denver. Hey, we want to be so close so we can watch the things together and they can see that from inside a meeting room what makes you think you're gonna be out in the open there and you'll see that yeah and to answer jody's question directly the nflpa has a representative observing uh every practice i i i don't know if it's live or streamed as as chris said but that's how they get uh that's how they get caught so my question with that is chris what kind of coach would you rather have would you rather have Mike McCarthy, all right, I'll take a 100K hit. Uh, uh, Ron Rivera, I'll take that hit. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna be a little bit more physical than I'm allowed. Or would you rather have the coach that acquiesces and says, all right, you know, we're going to practice uh, six times uh, this spring? <laughs> I'll take Siri out. Let's do that. <laughs> I, the re- and the reason for that is I'm looking long term. And if you try, I, I know the whole thing is if you're not cheating, you ain't trying. I understand that. But when I look at somebody when it comes to gameplay, like little detail stuff like that, that shows later on when it comes to games and everything else, who's more prepared. Like that stuff, I think, shows more often through organizationally when you start seeing this. And when you look at teams like the Cowboys who have had issues basically being a consistently winning football team. When you look at teams like the Commanders, who also have been consistently that one, little stuff like that, not paying attention to detail, even the little smallest things of, okay, can we hit in a mini camp? That, it, it, look over that. I think it has long-term education, and you start to see that on there. So I think that's like, – even though it's practicing, you're worried about hitting a little bit, I just don't – I don't get it personally. I, yeah. I, 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 10 I years ago. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> I think John Harbaugh has been fine the most. I think he's been fine 15 times. He still can't figure it out, but he doesn't <laughs> want to figure it out. And there's, I always, there's, he's a borderline Hall of Fame coach, I think. And, um, you know, there's always context and, and, and certain guys are, are good coaches and do things one way. And certain guys are good coaches 
and do things another way. I guess a, my better way to phrase it is, do you think Nick Sirianni has the cachet to do what Ron Rivera and Mike McCarthy did at this stage of his career and say, you know what? Screw you guys. I'm going to do what I want to do as the head yeah, coach of this football team. He is nowhere near it. I mean, I mean that was, that's what Connors, if he did so, I don't still see Nick being that guy to do so. Like, I think he's – maybe if he won a – maybe if he won a few de- – went a little deeper a couple of things, but I think it's more of a thing. It's like, hey, you know what? He's, for lack of better words, listening to doctors, I think, a little bit more than what we should, should be, I think, in my opinion. I think there should be about – there should be at least eight if you want to find a happy medium. But I think How about 13? You're things. allowed 13? How about 13? See, a lot of stuff you can't really, like, like – there's only so much you can do. Seven or seven, like, in, in 11 – you can't really – unless you get full pad 11 or 11 or a full pass. And I just don't think you could do so much. So, these guys can do seven or seven on their own time, away from the coaches, and then even though they may not do it, like, on the books, <laughs> but stream – have a stream like, oh, who's – my FaceTime is open. What's coach is watching? Oh, no, how that happen? Stuff like that. So, I, I'm, I'm okay with, like, eight, nine. I don't, I don't think they need all 13, right, right per se. All right, uh, CF, I want to ask you about a rumor deal, and that's all this is, is a rumor deal. I don't know how substance to it that the uh, media created. I think it started on Bleacher Report, and several Philly sites have picked it up. Um, Kareem Hunt to the Eagles, that the Browns might be ready to move on from Kareem. They've got Nick Chubb. Do they really need the two back attack? And they're paying both of the backs more money than the Eagles are paying any of their backs. Uh, could he be a fit here in Philadelphia? Andre Dillard plus has been the proposed trade. Uh, I don't see this happening for a very specific rumor, for a very specific reason. Excuse me. Do you think there's legs in it? Do you think something like this could be talked about, even if it hasn't truly been talked about yet? What do you, what, if you saw this uh, rumor the same as me, what do you think about Kareem Hunt to the Eagles? Personally, um, how do I put this? As the foot for the football side, it would make sense in a way, but I don't foresee. But if it was for some another position, maybe, but for a running back, I don't think you need uh, for this for what this team probably is going to be throwing a little bit more than what you saw. And given the the other pieces that you have, I'm probably passing on it. I still, I know it's been a couple years removed, but I still remember the allegations that came against them and what happened with that. And for me personally, I wouldn't. I don't think the team should bring that in there, especially with some of that stuff. If you saw, so I'll, I'll, I'd pass on that from that aspect of it. But overall, I think I wouldn't be surprised if they look to trade, I think from the Dillard aspect of it, more towards the end of the, uh, right before the cuts and everything, if they were trying to do a player for player trade to get somebody in here, say, I know they just got tarred, but like say another safety, say if you wanted to get, uh, somebody else but i just don't think right now for a running back I, i'd stay clear from career kareem hunt personally yeah i'm gonna i didn't see that one jody you didn't i, I, I kareem hunt I oh, mean, i've seen I, it in like three different places i think it <laughs> it started on bleacher report and then a couple of philly sites picked well up I, w- I would say this i think he's on the final year of his deal yeah so from that standpoint all right you know he's probably better on uh, as chris said um you know, from a football, from a pure football standpoint, he's probably better than any back the Eagles have. But the Eagles don't value the position, number one. Right. Also, the Browns have a first-round pick in 2020 at left tackle on one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. Why are they trying for Andre Dillard? I, mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm a big Andre Dillard guy. I think he's a starting left tackle in this league, bottom half. Um, the Browns, as I said, they're in the conversation with the Eagles for the best offensive line in football, uh, especially if they can get J.C. Treader back. But um, they don't have an issue at left tackle, uh, so it doesn't make sense from that standpoint. I don't know where this stuff starts, man. And I'll it, tell it, you, the dead period. John, it's John, dead period. you just made a great <laughs> argument. I'll tell you the biggest argument why it can't happen. The Eagles right now are 30th in the league in cap space, 30th out of 32 teams. As you pointed out, John, they don't value running back like a lot of other teams in the National Football League. And he's scheduled to make $6 million this year. 
that would absolutely cut into what the Eagles have left underneath the cap. They're not going to use the cap space that they have on a running back. They just don't believe in it. It's not happening. It doesn't even make. Uh, yeah, Frank, uh, Dillard makes a pretty good chunk of change. So you're only talking about the difference between Dillard's salary and Hunt's salary, but that's significant into itself. They're not going to do that for a running back. If if the Browns were willing to give them uh, Kareem Hunt, I don't think they'd do a deal like that. Yeah, I, I and, and Chris is right. It's the dead period. So I'm going to shift towards a deal um, that almost <laughs> did happen, uh, and that's Trey Waynes, who was on uh, a radio show yesterday. And I think a lot of people – looked at when free agency started and said, oh, you know, Trey Waynes, Jonathan Gannon had a history with him. Um, Anthony Harris had a history with him. That makes sense for some, for the Eagles. Turns out it did because the Eagles tried to sign him um, and he's contemplating retirement and he doesn't think he wants to play anymore. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good because if the Eagles signed Trey Waynes, you know, he was a, and he had the big reputation. He was, I think he was the 11th overall pick at one, you know, when he came into the league. Never lived up to that billing, but he got a big deal from Cincinnati a couple of years ago. So he's a big name. Um, had the history and said, yeah, I really thought about reuniting with JG and, and Anthony Harris. Um, he was got a better corner by waiting and got James Bradbury. Better to be lucky than good, Chris Franklin, in this yeah. instance? Yeah, yeah, because uh, if you get a guy who's questioning his belief in what, what the state of the thing, how, you don't know how much he's mailing in. I mean, you look at the you look at the playbook and go, he might, who knows, maybe he felt very invigorated. Hey, Jonathan, I haven't seen you in a while. Then that goes for about a week. And you know, <laughs> that's going on on that one. But it, I think a lot, a lot of this stuff is a luck. I mean, when you look at, like, you can put, as many you can put the best roster together in July, and then we see this so many times. Put the best roster together, everything's right. The next thing you know, oh no, the, the, somebody has an injury, and knee goes out, and you're scrambling. So it's you need luck. I mean, twenty seven the twenty seventeen season was to me still look about luck as well too. So I think it's better to be lucky than good sometimes. <laughs> All right, we're getting that much closer to training camp. Oh, can't can't get there fast enough. Uh, still five <laughs> weeks away. <laughs> other, other than the rumor deals we're going to toss around there, which we readily admit uh, are just that. I uh, saw so when yesterday John didn't see the uh, Kareem Hunt potential acquisition out there. Did either you guys see the Seattle reporter is saying, you know, the Seahawks may just jump into the Gardner Minshew mix? That uh, despite the fact that Pete Carroll came out last week and said, no, we're good with Drew Locke and Geno Smith. We're all right at the quarterback position. I wish I had seen that on video because I don't think he could have done it with a straight face. But apparently he did. Um, Gardner Minshew available now. That Hadn't that ship sailed that if they were going to trade him, they were going to do so early in the offseason so they go get a different backup quarterback? Uh, I don't know, like a Nick Foles. Um, is there any chance that the Eagles revisit if there is a really top heavy offer out there that they would trade Gardner Minshew? I think if it's the second or third, maybe, I think that's the, that's when you seriously got to think about it because I think the ship passed. I think if you're going to get rid of them, I thought you, the, before the draft would have been the best route to do so because there's still some meh quarterbacks are out there, but now you, you can't do so because if you're doing so, you're leaving yourself right now with the mentors going reads and that in Carson Strong. And I don't want to, yeah. I know everybody's hyped up about Carson Strong. I mean, he's nice and everything else, but I don't see him as a QB2 right now. He's still got some, see, you saw the arm strength and you saw them in the mobility and practice during the mini camp practices, mini camp stuff, so OTAs and stuff. But I look at him, he still has to digest the system, first of all. He still has to get used to the NFL game speed. Maybe next, I think next year is the thing where you start to contemplate if he's good enough, you're moving him to QB2, but right now he's no first. So I think unless they know somebody is, unless they got a, a proven backup quarterback in mind that, and, and look at the list, I, I think the list is like, before I forget, it's not, it's not in a lot of great names. No, right now, so. no. 
I yeah, and I, I think the Eagles love it if they could get something valuable. But then who's your backup quarterback? I mean, you can't go into a season with Reed Sinnett or Carson Strong as your backup quarterback. I, the, especially for this team, we talk about value. They value that position, the backup quarterback position. They've shown it pretty consistently. That, to me, is the conversation. I hate to bring up this name, but here we are. You know, there was that little ripple that said, hey, the Eagles are interested in bringing Nick Foles back. You know, maybe if you could spin off Gardner Minshew, get something valuable and bring Nick Foles back, but he's not available now. Right. So um, you need somebody to be the backup quarterback. And all I can say about Carson Strong is he's better than Jamie Newman. People were excited about Jamie <laughs> Newman. He didn't last rookie camp. He, he, he came in for rookie camp and got cut. So – Carson beat him. Carson Strong, not the other Carson, uh, is better than Jamie Newman, but I don't want him to be my backup quarterback. I can tell you that. Yeah, and then also the full stuff, even with the full stuff that was lingering around, lingering around, I don't know if I wanted to bring him back to Philly, not just because no. that not because that would because that was I think that was just the first game. If if Jalen Hurst threw for like oh, 240, yeah. 50 yards against Detroit in that first game. Why wasn't Nick in there? Nah, that would be a circus in itself. I mean, don't get me wrong. It'd be good to write about that stuff. And I mean, everybody else on for me, it's not going to be nice. But, yeah, just for, for teams, that, that just would have been just craziness overall. <laughs> it would have been craziness. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, CF, uh, I asked you about the other teams getting fined for having practices too hard. Eagles not going near as hard as some other teams. Uh, we got the Jaquiski tart signing in some people's eyes. I think that locks up a Super Bowl appearance for the Eagles. Um, <laughs> what 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 else can we expect here in the next four weeks? Is I think Howie's got his roster pretty darn well said, other than hoping nobody gets hurt playing volleyball somewhere for the next month, getting into their own conditioning for the season. Is there anything we can like at least keep an eye on, Chris? That uh, could have our attention peaked here in Philadelphia with the birds. This is going to be the only other thing I can possibly see, and it'll be the most boring move ever. And nobody, it, it's a punter. Nobody wants to see a punter on there. Maybe you bring a camp leg in there. Cause if Aaron Sipos just, if he continues to look like, Hey, you know, can boom the consistency, cause especially after the end of last year, just to see whatever veteran punters out there, see what they have left. But even then you still have to watch out for, the field goal mechanics. You don't want to mess up Jake Elliott in that aspect. But otherwise, there's not much they can really do. Uh, you, is, unless Jordan Howard comes back and goes, hey, guys, I'm back for my annual uh, right before training camp. Um, I'm here joining you guys. Something like that. Uh, besides that, this is going to be – it's going to be a weird – I think it's going to be an eerily quiet dead period until we get to training camp. I just got that weird feeling about it. And, yeah, that, we're here that, now. Everybody <laughs> hopes for, you know, coaches hope for this dead period. The last thing they want is that phone call with somebody getting in trouble or something right. like that. So, Can you imagine Dom calling, how he's frozen in the face for Nick's near Dom calling, like, oh, Dom, what, yeah. the Dom's, how he's, what's Dom going just on? got promoted. Dom, <laughs> no, no trouble. No trouble, Dom. Close circuit to him. He's at C. Franklin News. Read him at NJ.com with our buddy Les Bowen as well. Um, Chris Franklin, always appreciate uh, when you come on. I'll leave you with this. Um, speed, Devin Allen, breaking records, Ooh. still doing track all over the place in Europe. Um, he's going to show up at some point, we're told. Uh, had COVID, missed some, some of the offseason stuff. Obviously, didn't affect him uh, because he's out there uh, still breaking records. We were kind of told he was giving up track, but he's not giving up track. He's just going to come to the Eagles, make the team, win the Super Bowl, and then go back to track. Is that how it's going to work out <laughs> for Devin Al? He'll be one of those guys where I think everybody's going to be oohing and eyeing when they do like the quick uh, the sprints and everybody's seeing their the, the play yeah. in the ground going that one too. I'm just going, wow. And I, I hope this doesn't happen because you know what's going to happen. The moment there's a, there's a kickoff return or whatever, and they're practicing, and he leaps over, he hurls over one guy trying to dive or something like that. It's like, oh my oh, goodness, yeah. he got the next thing. And that Darren Sproles part two, three, four, five, six. No, 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 no. Well, I, I lied. He... Uh, I got one more for you. <laughs> over under on Devin Allen first week of training camp stories, I put the number at 35. <laughs> Ooh. 
And you too will be uh, guilty of yeah. I'll be oh yeah. Two of those thirty five. We McMullen, yeah. Jack, Franklin, yeah. Jack. Can we come up with thirty three more guys? You got to do it. The problem is you got to find an angle. Uh, yeah, you, you gotta, and everybody yeah. in the same one. I'm gonna go yeah. under 24 and a half, 20, 24 <laughs> and a half, and the half's gonna be some computer nah, generated. Play, it's way up that way too. We don't have 35, but there's gonna be a lot. There's, yeah, it's the first, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm shocked he didn't come in the mini camp. If he came in the mini camp, it would have been all done, but now it's just yeah. we'll see him training camp the first time. Yeah. Oh my goodness, so yeah, all right. At <laughs> the risk of annoying more of Eagles Nation, uh, here's my prediction for uh, Mr. Allen. He comes into camp, he opens some eyes, the Eagles put him through to the practice squad, and somebody else claims him. And he goes and plays somewhere else. And then uh, everyone is screaming and whining and moaning and bitching because they didn't put him on the roster. Mark my words. That's exactly the way it's going to happen. The Eagles were the first one to sign him. They're going to bring him in. He's going to have one big run back in a preseason game, but they're still not going to have room for him on the regular roster. And somebody's going to yeah. come in and pick. It's going to be him. Noah uh, Tagai all over again. How could they he lose a- Noah? Noah. Now they have him back as the six-string tight end. So. And and the Eagles might get him back again. And you're right; it might go the exact same way, yeah. John. But yeah. he will be picked off the Eagles practice squad. Yeah. Somebody is going to take him. Mark my words. Uh, Chris Franklin, good to have you back to work. Good to have you back with us here on uh, Birds Three Sixty Five. We'll get back with you in a couple of weeks, buddy. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me. I appreciate it. It's always Chris- fun. Chris Franklin Thanks, Chris. here with us on Birds 365. All right, one thing we got to do before we go to break. Uh, <clears throat> just to reiterate the point that I kind of probably overdid at the top of the show. Um, anybody who's watching now knows by now. Eagle signed Jaquiski Tart, uh, former starting safety of the San Francisco 49ers. No details yet on the deal. There's a reason why there are no t- t- details yet. It's not a big deal if there if it was a big deal. And all it has to be to be a big deal is more than the veteran minimum because yeah. that's what he played at last year. So if he was getting more than the veteran minimum, chances are his agency would have leaked out the details of the deal. We don't know what it is, but both John and I are speculating it's going to be damn close to the veteran minimum, if not exactly at the veteran minimum. Um, So you have to take that into consideration when you uh, evaluate the move that the Eagles made by signing him. And I said, John, I can't believe so many people are reaching out either via my phone lines on WIP or hit me on Twitter. Why don't you like this signing? This is a great signing. How do they get a guy like that? This is uh, Howie Roseman at his finest. And I said, I'm just surprised that the fan base here in town has become a little bit of a cheerleader fan base. It's never been that way during my 30-plus years here in Philadelphia, and it's starting to develop that in the last couple of years. We have a prime example right here on Birds 365. On our stream feed, and again, appreciate (laughs) all of those of you. We love the fact that you're, you're streaming in to watch. Oh, by the way, you can hit the like button while you're at it. That would help out your boys, Mac and Mac. Um, but we also like the commenters, the people who give comments during the show. Uh, Dominique Dabney. You think that's a lady listener, a lady streamer, Dominique? It could be either Man. or. It could be Dominique Wilkins. Uh, you know, it could be either or, okay. uh, Dominique. I, we don't know because it's just a name on the screen. And Dominique, I thank you for contributing to the show. But you are a prime example. I will read what Dominique wrote to us just 8.30 to about 20 minutes ago. Uh, Nobody is overhyping Tart, but he is clearly and easily the best safety on the roster right now. Really. Clearly and easily the best safety on the roster. So if John and I are right that Jaquiski Tart is going to sign for the veteran minimum or damn close to it. What the hell does that say about Marcus Epps and Anthony Harris? That they're going to pick up a guy off the scrap heap. And oh, yes. On on June 17th. If you are still out there on June 17th, it is officially the scrap heap. You're picking a guy up off the scrap heap. And by joining your team, he easily and clearly becomes the best safety on your squad. 
Well, then what the hell does that say about the safeties you've already got on your yeah. squad, John? It, it doesn't say much. And that's a bad thing if, if uh, Tart is the best safety on your team. That's a bad thing. That's a bad thing because it can happen. Happened last year. We go back to Stephen Nelson two days before training camp. Oh, it was very clear that Steve Nelson, the moment he signed, was a better option than Zach McPherson as a rookie fourth-round pick. And everybody knew it. Uh, so it can happen, but it's never a good thing, Jody. You don't want to be in a position to go find somebody on the scrap heap who is um, better than what you have. The Eagles do like Marcus Epps. That's real. Um, we'll see. I mean, you you can look at what they gave Anthony Harris, which I think is two two and a half million, um, which isn't a lot. Uh, if if they give Tart less than that, it 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 it's not a great validation of Anthony Harris no. the contract. He got less money than he got last year to sign here. So they said, all right, we'll bring you back, but we're not thrilled with you. That's what that contract says. If, if but that's what it says for Anthony Harris, well, what is less going to say about Tart? Yeah. And what I love about this more than anything else is uh, Dominique decided to qualify, quantify exactly which. Nobody is overhyping Tart. Oh, I would suggest that you're overhyping Tart, yeah. Dominique, if you're going to say he is, now again, want to quote this exactly, clearly and easily the best safety on the roster right now. You better hope that's not true. You better hope that's not true. That's kind it of could point. be true. It could be true. Unfortunately, the Eagles hope it's not true. Uh, it's. It, I'll tell you this. And by the way, Jody, what's frustrating to me is I've described this in numerous outlets, including Jacob Sports, as a good signing, a smart signing, a good insurance policy. I have given it uh, the thumbs up. I think it's another smart move by Howie Roseman. I say all of that and say there's a chance that he is the best safety on this team. And there's a chance he won't even be on this team September 11th because the Eagles are hoping Marcus Epps runs with the baton uh, and takes over one of the starting jobs. They are hoping Kayvon Wallace turns the corner, the light comes on, however you want to describe it, as a potential third safety. But as Howie always says, hope is not a strategy. So it's smart to have a contingency plan. And this was a smart, valuable June signing. But there, there, there's no need to describe it as more than that. This isn't Ronnie Lott. This isn't one of the best covered safeties in football. And these are some of the descriptors I've gotten for Dominique. So when you say no one has overhyped him, even if you think you haven't overhyped him. How about the guy who said he's one of the best covered safeties in football? Is that overhyping? Because well, you're, bit, you're, we got that yesterday. you're not only a, a, a insulting Jody Mack and Johnny Mack and every, you're insulting 32 teams in the NFL because they don't stink and agree with you because right. you're not on the, you're not on the market on June 17th. If you're one of the best covered safeties in football, and make signing. it Fitzpatrick got a lot of money. <laughs> he's not he's not worried about where he's going to be playing on June 17th. Exactly right. John McMullen, Johnny McDonald, your Mac and Mac guys, here with you on Birds 365. All right, J-Mac, when we come back, I'm going to throw a couple of over-unders your way. Uh, our buddy uh, BLG, Brandon Lee Gowden on Bleeding Green Nation, put up a couple of over-unders on his site. Uh, I think about 26 or 28 of them, somewhere there about. I'm not going to run 26 or 28 by you, <laughs> but I picked out a couple of uh, good ones that we I think we time. can have some fun we got time. and Let's debate with. Uh, he is John McMullen. I'm Jody McDonald. You've got us on Birds 365.
field of life, First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. At Action News, we cherish every moment. And it's our profound responsibility to bring you closer to your world. Never miss a moment. Trust the people at Action News. In Philadelphia, we celebrated the miracle with pride only five years ago. And then the following morning, IBEW Local 98 members went back to work, building this city, rescuing our communities from decay, and inspiring the young men and women of the region to take pride in who we are. Like the cats, Local 98 members believe in hope. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities with Local 98, visit us, IBEW98.org. All right, did you know I was the Mommy Slam Dunk champion? Really? <laughs> yes, really, don't sound so surprised. Let's see it. Oh, you're ready. All right, here we go. Let's hear the crowd. So go to right, go to left, that fake a mom. Mama, go. Oh, mama! She did it. Again, you can't avoid gravity, but United Healthcare can help you avoid financial surprises by helping you compare costs and doctor quality ratings. United Healthcare. Uh huh. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resorts. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. You got the Mac and Mac guys here on Birds 365. Uh, coming up in about oh, less than 20 minutes from now, our pal Dan Lust, sports attorney, uh, sports law professor. Uh, we've had him on the show previously. There's a couple of major cases in the National Football League with legal bents to them. Deshaun Watson, uh, the commander, Dan Snyder, got all sorts of legal <laughs> messages going his way down in Washington. He's in France. Uh, he went the Norman Bremen route. Let's go to he's, France. He's, he's hiding across the pond. Yeah. Is that what you're telling yeah. me, Johnny yeah. Mac? Yep. All right. Uh, we, we, there's a couple of big legal cases going on in the NFL, so we thought it'd be a good time to get our bud, Dan Lust, who's been on with us before. Uh, very good uh, sports attorney to join us here on Birds 365. But before we get there, a uh, couple of over-unders. I was on Bleeding Green Nation um, yesterday, day before, whenever it was. Um, and uh, Brandon Lee Gowton put together a bunch of over-unders for the Eagles in this upcoming year, uh, individual player statistics. Uh, we're not going to go through all 28 of them, but I picked out a, a couple that I need your take on. Uh, not surprising, he's got some Jalen Hurts over-unders. Jalen Hurts quarterback rating. Now, I do like quarterback rating. I think it's one of those... I guess I, I say the same thing about pro football focus uh, and quarterback rating, though they go hand in hand. The old axiom, uh, democracy is the worst government out there, except for every other one. That's the same way I feel about quarterback ratings and pro football focus ratings. They, they're questionable. You can look at them and say, I just don't get it. I don't think this is right. I don't think it paints the proper picture. Except when I ask you, well, then what would you use to describe the player, to, to, to rank the player? Well, I don't know. Well, somebody's got to do it. And I think Pro Football Focus does a pretty good job. And I think quarterback rating is the best of an imperfect way to decide how good a quarterback is. Uh, so Jalen Hurts quarterback rating, 93.7, Johnny Mack. Not to 100, <clears throat> but certainly <throat> higher than he's been since he got into the National Football League, 93.7 quarterback rating for Jalen Hurts. You're going over or under? Ooh, uh, it's a good number. I give Brandon credit. Uh, he hasn't done it yet. Hasn't been over 90. I said, we're, we're talking passer rating. That's one of my passer pet rating. Excuse me, yes. ESPN came up with their new stat quarterback rating. But, um, Which, by the way, can I bitch about that? Sure. ESPN just uh, co-opted 
quarterback rating. Because passer rating was quarterback rating until ESPN said, no, 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 no. We've got our own rating and we're going to call it quarterback rating. So quarterback rating became passer rating because ESPN said so. That annoyed me. Well, it was always passer rating. It's always been, it's been one of my pet peeves for like 20 years. So it's been, it's been a long time. And one of the reasons Jalen Hurts, one of the reasons it is one of my pet peeves, Jody, is it doesn't emphasize what Jalen Hurts brings to the position. Right. And Lamar Jackson and quarterbacks like that, you know, back in the day, it doesn't take that into account. So that's, and that's why I always it's it's passer rating, which indicates if you have a good passer rating, you're a good passer. So it does it it it's it's valuable from that standpoint. And and now a good passer, I was, you know, Joe Montana. I know the number today, ninety two point three when he retired, his passer rating because it was so astronomical at the time. Now that's below average, and we're talking about uh, ninety. What was it? Ninety three point seven. Point seven. Yes, for, we're for asking Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts to be better than Joe Montana. Yeah, and by the way, that's below average. The the good quarterbacks are up in the high nineties. Most of them are in the hundreds. Um, I'm going to go under until I see it. Until I see him get to that level, um, as a passer, but it doesn't take into account Jalen's strengths. It doesn't. So I don't think it's as, it's as important. But I don't see him hitting mid nineties as a passer. I don't think that's the strength of his game. Until I see it, I find it hard to believe. All right. Staying with the passer aspect, completion percentage. BLG set the number at sixty four percent. Will mm. Jalen Hurts complete better than sixty four percent of his passes? <clears throat> Um, I'm going to go yes on this one. I'm going to go 64.2% uh, because I think the Eagles are going to be cognizant of it. I think there's going to be a lot of short throws. We see the bubble screens are going to be back and um, they're going to try to utilize Kenny Gainwell. Um, I think they're going to try to get him easy completions. Um, and I think that's going to be a part part of the game plan. I'd like to see him again. It's a different era. Good, the, the good quarterbacks can go over 70, the Drew Breeses and the Aaron Rodgers. You'd like to see him over 65, but I think he's going to creep over 64. Okay, so slightly over 64. All right, this one I like because uh, a lot of wagering outlets give you the option to make plays like this. The comparisons between, not an over-under, but the comparisons between two players. More completions this year, more receptions this year for the Philadelphia Eagles. Kenny Gainwell or Quez Watkins? Uh, that's a good one, too. Yes. Um, it should be Kenny Gainwell um, because Quez is going to be limited by the fact that, you know, uh, AJ's getting the ball. Devontae's getting the ball. Dallas is getting the ball. And then it becomes, all right, who's going to be the fourth option? In theory, the third down back, the hurry up back, the safety valve should have more opportunities than the fourth option in the in the passing game downfield. The, the, the one hesitation I have in that theory is <clears throat> Jalen's never shown – the want to dump the ball off mainly because he's such a good runner and he can take it for 20 yards. And if you dump it off to the back, he's probably going to get eight, nine yards and he can do more. So there, there is a little bit to think about more with Jalen hurts, but I, I would have to say, Kenny Gainwell. You're going to go with Gainwell. So am I. Um, and it's not because I think that Zach Pascal is going to cut tremendously into the numbers for Quez Watkins. Uh, you're, you're a bigger Pascal fan than I am. Uh, we'll see how much he contributes this year. Hey, he's going to block uh, since they've now moved J.J. Arcega Whiteside into tight end. They need that blocking wide receiver, and that's what I think. <laughs> that doesn't count as a reception. You don't get any reception credits when you're downfield blocking. All right, um, Devonta Smith yardage this year. They set the number at 999. 
So if he's a thousand yard receiver, it's an over. If he's not, it's an under 999.5 yards. That's fun to Smith receiving over under McMullen. Under, I I can't, to me, that's, you know, that's basically a thousand yards, right? Um, yep. I do expect AJ Brown to get it, be a thousand yard receiver. And I just can't see this team with this, uh, I always use that term volume of a thrower having two 1,000 yard receivers. Um, and AJ is going to be the guy. AJ is going to be number one. AJ is um, going to get the most targets um, if everybody's healthy. So I can't see him getting two. So I have to go under. All right. Now, this one, I, I'm singing BLG's praises, but I just think he's got a bad number here. Total rushing yards. Have you even looked at this, Johnny, or am I running it by you for the first You're time? You're running it by me for okay, the first good. time. All right, so this is going to be a two-part question. Uh, once you answer the first part, the second part should become easy. What do you think he set the number at for Miles Sanders rushing yards this year? 920, somewhere around there. Yeah, higher. He went 999. Same exact as Devonta Smith receiving yards, 999. Um, are you going over or under? Under. I mean, there's no proof that uh, Miles, you know, if he ever played 17 games, it's not that hard to get to 1,000 yards, but there's no evidence he's going to play 17 games. There's no evidence. Um, he's going to be able to to stay on the field that consistently. Um, so if you're a betting man, and that's what this is about, you got to go with the logic, and he's just not going to play enough to get uh, up to a thousand yards. If he had set it at seven ninety nine rather than nine ninety nine, I still might have taken under. Wow. Because I'd, I'd go over there. They're, they're on know. record as saying they want to throw the football. Well, and that's the reason too. they went yeah. out and got AJ Brown. This is not going to be the same Eagle offense that we saw last year. They're going to throw the football more. Even if they <laughs> throw it to Miles coming out of the backfield, that doesn't count as rushing yards. Yeah. Um, Plus, I Jalen think- Hurts is going to gobble up a lot of the rushing yards. Um, but you know, if Miles, if if they start where they started last year, and I think they are, and that's going to be with a two man rotation, Miles and and Kenny, um, I think he'll he'll go over eight hundred pretty easily, barring you know significant injury. Um, but again, you know, this is a guy who misses three four games every year, gets banged up. Um, that's going to affect the numbers. Um, and who knows what happened? Remember what happened last year when Miles got hurt in Vegas, Jody, is they were forced to play. Um, remember also Kenny Gainwell in that game was playing well, but then he fumbled the football inside the, the red zone and they got kind of frustrated with that. So then they had to go to Boston Scott. They elevated Jordan Howard and they just played well. And when Miles was ready to come back, there were people even questioning, uh, are you going to stick with the hot hand? And the Eagles were like, no, because they do value Miles Sanders. They do know he's their best back. But they also found roles for pretty much Jordan, Jordan Howard when he was healthy in Boston, Scott, even a little bit. Um, in those types of circumstances, you know, if those guys start to play well, and Jordan's not even here, but he might be here. Uh, come the start of training camp, that could factor into it as well. And they could expand the committee just like they did last year. But if the plan works and it's Miles Sanders and Kenny Gainwell and it's a two-man committee, I think he easily gets over 800, but I can't go over 1,000. Yeah, last year, 754. And the Eagles are going to run the football less this year than they did last year. How is he getting a thousand yards? Well, you you hope he plays a couple more games, you know, but that's, you know, he's every year. It seems he gets banged up a little bit. First year he played all 16 last two years, 12 and 12. So the, the injury history is there. I'll cross my face. If, 
if you can guarantee me that Miles Sanders is going to play all 16 games, oh, yeah, I'm going to take over 800. Yes. I penciled it in right now. And he's even got a shot at getting the, the thousand yards. Uh, you want to bet me even up that Miles Sanders doesn't no, play all 17 no, games? No. But, you know, I, I as we talk about it, I'm thinking about other angles. One angle is also, Jody, they might be willing to, to ride him a little bit more because they kind of know he's not going to be here next year. So the old mentality of, Hey, run him into the ground. Is yeah. that where you're going yeah. with me? Yeah. Uh, he's not going to be back next year. So give him the football. Um, but this team is so, I just throw it out. This team is so safety conscious and this, that they're probably not going to be that way. And he's never proven to be the Ezekiel Elliott type back. who's going to take 300 touches and uh, you know, he might be on the shelf by week three, if you give him that kind of workload. So, uh, but it's something to think about. And, oh, by the way, which I don't think it's going to happen. I'm with you that the Eagles just don't come into the season with that kind of mindset. They could. Can't dismiss it. But I just don't think it, if I'm if you're asking me to make a prediction, I would say, no, they're not going to try and run him into the ground. Miles will be OK with that. Because I think he thinks that he's one of the best backs in the National Football League. And the reason that he hasn't had a thousand yard season has been because A he got hurt or B the Eagles haven't given him the ball enough. So yeah. if they if they chose to go down that road and make work uh, uh Miles a workhorse back, bell cow back, use whatever word you want to use to describe him, I think Miles would accept it. I don't think there'd be any uh, be like, well, are you guys trying to kill me here with all these carries? No, I think he'd take every single one of them and be happy, happy as all heck. I agree. Um, and on both accounts, Miles wants a chance to prove he's one of the best backs in this league. Um, and he's on a contract year. And in theory, you know, from his standpoint, he's like, well, if I have a 1600 yard year, I'm going to get paid uh, uh, as much as running backs can get paid in this market, but you know, players don't tend to think about the back end and what I just said, you know, even if you have that monster year, people are going to look at how many touches you had. People are going to look at the history, the analytics of, of running backs after a season where they touch the football a lot and they're not favorable, but players are thinking in the moment. Yeah. He wants to prove himself. All right, just give me a let me give you a couple more, and then Dan Lust, our favorite sports attorney, is going to jump aboard with us here on Birds. Um, Hassan Reddick sacks over under 10 and a half. I'm going over. That's what Eagles fans want. That's all they want on the defensive side of the football is sacking the quarterback. This guy has been over double digits two consecutive years. The Eagles brought him in to rush the passer. He's going to get plenty of opportunities. He's got good compliments on the defensive line. If he got over 10 sacks in, in Carolina, if he got over 10 sacks in Arizona, he should sure as hell get over 10 sacks here. I am 100% with you there because he is one of the guys that I hyped. Shoot. I hyped him two years ago before he signed with Carolina. Eagles, get this guy. Bring home, bring the Temple kid home. Bring the Camden kid home. And he did a one-year stopover in Carolina, but they did get him done. So, yeah, I'm I'm banking on that. I'm rooting for that. I'm predicting that, that it's going to be more than 10 and a half. All right, here's a real interesting one, and then we're going to punch our buddy Dan Lutz up. Um, quarterback percentage against the Eagles. Last year, they had several of these. <laughs> the number this year is oh. one and a half. Over 80% completion rate versus the Eagles this year. One and a half over under. We'll have two games of the opposing quarterback throwing over 80%, J-Mac. Yes. Yes, over. Um, Ooh, that hurts. For this reason, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It is a bad thing. Yeah, it is. Gonna, but, There's but, no way but, 80. We're not talking about uh, 69, no, 80% it, but, completion rate. By what, I, what I mean by not a bad thing is you wouldn't prefer it. But two, and I'll take two, it was one and a half, right? One and a half, so, yeah. Well, so I'm going two games, games. Two games with over 80%. 
there's just a bunch of teams that are going to take what you give them and they're going to play a lot of zone and they're going to throw stuff underneath and a completion percentage is going to be really good. But you might even be able to win the football game if you rally and tackle and do what you're supposed to do. So I don't think two is a big number. I think that number should be higher. Uh, so that number, for the way the Eagles are going to play, people are going to dink and dunk. They're going to dink and dunk, and that leads to um, high completion percentages, lack of explosive plays. So two games – I'd be okay with that. Okay. As long as they win at least one of the two games, I'd be okay with it too. But I, I would take the under on that one. All right. Uh, Mac and Mac guys, McMullen and McDonald here with you on Birds 365. There are a bunch of decisions to be made in the National Football League situations to be handled that dip into the legality of things. Dan Lust, our favorite sports uh, attorney, is going to join us next here on Birds 365. Stay right there. Go for the pulse and the pulse. And the pulse. Go for Go the pulse and the odds. Oz. Go for the bubbles and the bubbly. Go for the story and the stories. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Seven, one, three. One, two, three. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass. Free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. News, we cherish every moment, and it's our profound responsibility to bring you closer to your world. Never miss a moment. Trust the people at Action News. All right, did you know I was the Mommy Slam Dunk Champion? Really? <laughs> yes, really, don't sound so surprised. Let's see it. Oh, you're ready. All right, here we go. Let's hear the crowd. So go to right, I go to left, got fake them Mama. mama, go up, oh, mama! She did it. Again. You can't avoid gravity, but United Healthcare can help you avoid financial surprises by helping you compare costs and doctor quality ratings. United Healthcare. Uh huh. Go for the midnight tears. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. John McMullen, I'm Jody McDonald. We appreciate you streaming on in here to Birds 365. Um, hopefully we can get our picture uh, straightened out there so we can get a good look <laughs> at Dan Lust, go. our favorite sports attorney, who's good enough to hop aboard with us for a couple of minutes. Dan, how you been, big guy? I'm good, good. It's been a busy week in the world of NFL, following the live PGA madness. We'll say lawyers are in need all yeah. over uh more news on the live pga madness this morning but um uh, obviously nfl show dan so we got to start with deshaun watson um you know it, it, obviously we're in a different phase of this and 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 the criminal charges off the board at least for now anytime you have new accusations it could always pop back up but 
for now, we're talking about the 24 civil suits and the NFL seems like they're ready to act. And uh, there's been a lot of speculation reports from the Washington Post that it's going to be a significant penalty. So I kind of want to pick your brain on the new setup of sort of the NFL and disciplinary procedure. And from a legal perspective, you know, it, it to me as a layman, it seems kind of strange. And the fact that Roger Goodell is no longer the judge, jury, and executioner. Uh, Sue Robinson is going to be sort of the arbiter. Uh, uh, the NFL, the NFLPA can recommend punishments. She hands it out. But here's here's the twist, Dan. Once she does that, so if it's 12 games, year, whatever, then each side can appeal. And if they appeal, then it's in Roger Goodell's hands. He gets to make the decision or he gets to name the person that's going to make the decision. So, I mean, the union agreed to this. So from a legal perspective, it might be difficult for them to balk at it. But just your thoughts on theory of the whole setup and how it seems to me convoluted it is. Yeah, it, it certainly is. Um, and uh, I think you guys know in my, my professional practice, we deal a lot with this NFL structure. And Roger Goodell uh, seems to wield too much power. Uh, I think that that's pretty clear. Um, but the problem is, right, and you can go through the history books of, um, you know, arbitration decisions in NFL history or, or Major League Baseball history, any of our major sports. If there is an arbitrator that decides against the league in some way, shape or form, they tend to not be heard from again. They tend to be removed from the list of approved people. So think about it, right? If Roger Goodell refers the matter, right? If it goes up an appeal, Roger Goodell refers somebody. Um, you would think that that person uh, is just, pro I mean, listen, we can have all the faith we want in the judicial system, but, you know, uh, sometimes things are a little crooked, right? And if Roger Goodell refers the matter to somebody that then decides against Roger Goodell, guess who's probably not getting a case again, right? <laughs> um, I just, just use some common sense here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't I, I think it's a step in the right direction. Right. But at the end of the day, if Roger Goodell is calling the shots, right, if it goes up on appeal and it goes to Goodell, I don't know how fair that system necessarily is. But at the end of the day, right, it's the owner's league. The players have done a tremendous job across all sports, getting a larger and larger piece of that pie. But at the end of the day, right, the owners control the league. So it, it's not a shock that the owner's uh, system is, is going to benefit them. All right, two more Deshaun Watson questions, if you'd be so kind, Dan. Number one is uh, the fact that John pointed out two new losses. It was 22 for the longest period of time. They came close to settling it, couldn't get it done. That's why Deshaun Watson didn't get traded to the Miami Dolphins, uh, did eventually get traded to the Browns. Looks like we're going forward. There are going to be court cases on the civil side. But the two new cases that have been filed since the trade went down the prosecutors can investigate, the police can investigate, the prosecutors could change their mind and actually bring criminal charges against Deshaun Watson. It's been reported that there is a clause in the $250 million guaranteed contract that he signed that if he is charged with criminal uh, charges, that there is an out in the contract and the, the Browns could decide to not hold up their end of the guaranteed bargain. It's a nice stipulation to have if you're the Browns, but they're not thinking about going down that road, are they? they they've gone too far down the, the Sean Watson road. I know uh, Baker Mayfield's still under contract to the Browns, but it, it would have to be unbelievably bad news coming out with these other two plaintiffs for uh, Cleveland to actually revisit whether they want uh, Deshaun Watson at all. Yeah. Is there, Dan? So two new two new ones have been filed. My, uh, you know, the reporting's out there that two more are down the pike. So we, we could get up to 26 by the end of this week. So the question is, right, when the Cleveland Browns did their quote unquote due diligence, did they know about these ahead of time, right? We all saw the New York Times report 66 masseuses in a 17 month period. You have to think, right, just the Venn diagram, right? How many more could be filed? I think there were 18 women that filed um, affidavits in support of Deshaun Watson. So, you know, some rough math here. 18 in support plus 22 that have already filed cases that leaves like 20 plus that are up in the air. They could fall with Deshaun Watson or against Deshaun Watson. 
So if you're just trying to figure out what's fair, I, I would think the, the Browns knew about these potential cases that could come. They knew there was a percentage chance that more cases could come because the statute of limitations hasn't run yet. So, you know, the lawyers, uh, you know, that the Browns worked with, I'm sure told them that, hey, more could come. So, Jody, to your point, let's say um, and I, I haven't seen the, the contract that says this written disclosure clause. I know what you're talking about. I don't know necessarily if it's confirmed that criminal charges would void the contract. But put it this way, right? The Browns already parted with three first round picks. It would be pretty crazy of them to avoid the contract if criminal charges follow because they're not getting those first round picks back from the Houston Texans. So I think they've already, you know, um, made their bed with Deshaun Watson. I think those guys are wed. And if you listen to Deshaun Watson at the press conference, he said he wants to, you know, uh, finish his career out with the Cleveland Browns. So I, I think they're telling him, hey, you're our guy. We've already, uh, you know, hitched our wagon to you, so to speak. So I, I don't think the Browns are going to try to avoid the contract. And I think if they tried to, um, Jody, John, I, I think the that Watson would have put up a fight and say that you guys should have known about this. You should have known about this potential ahead of time. So talking about a big fight in terms of a suspension between the NFLPA and the owners, we're going to have a huge fight between Deshaun Watson's team and the Cleveland Browns future if they try to get out of that contract. You mentioned some of that reporting, Dan. Also, if you go back to last year at the trade deadline with Deshaun Watson, um, uh, it's now pretty clear that Miami had agreed uh, to a deal. They were going to acquire Deshaun Watson uh, pending the settlement of, of at the time were the 22 civil cases. Um, he was able to get 18. Uh, I think John McClain told us, a uh, famous NFL writer from the Houston Chronicle. Now, it... it he was given a hundred thousand dollars to each uh, accuser. Um, is that helpful or does that hurt when it comes to moving forward? If you're say Rusty Harden, if you, you, you were the client, you guys have a lot of high profile clients at Garagos and Garagos. So if, if is that helpful to you in that type of situation? In other words, if it's out there and people know Deshaun Watson's, offering up a hundred grand for anybody who's accusing him. Can you use that is what I'm trying to say. John, thank you for the plug for the firm, Garagos and Garagos, <laughs> best firm out there. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, here, here's the, here's the point, right? If, if Rusty Harden, who's a famous defense attorney, right? He represented Clemens and Adrian Peterson. If he wanted that information out there, it would have been out long ago. I, I would gather that he's not so happy that came out and not coincidental, right? Right around the time that the reporting came out that Watson offered up 100000 per plaintiff, um, you know, doesn't matter how good the case is, how bad the case is, everybody gets $100,000, it's flat. Right around the same time of that reporting, four new plaintiffs popped up. Yeah. If I was one of those 20-plus plaintiffs on the sideline, we did that math, right? 18 had said some type of statement in support. 22 had already filed cases. That leaves about 27 unaccounted for. If I'm one of those 27, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. All I have to do is file a couple pieces of paper and I get a hundred thousand. That's probably more than I make in a year. Right. Yeah. I'm a masseuse. I'm a, I'm a massage therapist. Also I'll opt into this hundred thousand. It's like those class action cases. Like, have you been harmed by mesothelioma? <laughs> 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 so yeah. I, I think that that's interesting, right? A lot of people have popped in my replies and said, Watson needs to settle all these cases and move on. And I'm like, well, if he would have paid that $2.2 .2 million, right? 22 plaintiffs, a hundred thousand each. There is no guarantee that, 23, 24, 25, and 26 would have popped up after the fact. So that's why Watson, I, I don't, John, to your question, I don't think he likes that being out there because now, you know, the, the you know, Pandora's box is open. You could have 5, 10, 15 people pop up. And Watson was asked a good question at his press conference. There was a lot of good reporting on this case. We'll shout out to Jenny Varentis, who I used to work with when I was at the Giants back in the day uh, when she was at the Star Ledger. She had this reporting, right? 67 potential plaintiffs. You'd hope the Browns knew about that. You'd hope the Dolphins knew about that. All these teams. The problem is, right, I don't know how many more people are going to pop out. And Watson was asked, you know, does that number sound right? 67 massages or masseuses in a 17-month period. And he goes, uh, you know, what I talked to with my lawyers, I'm not sure. The man, Deshaun Watson, does not know how many massages. Yeah, that's an easy question to answer. You shouldn't be, uh, you, you know. Yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't. I mean, I'm just looking at what his response was. He doesn't know, right? Unless he's keeping a spreadsheet of how many different masseuses that he had over that period of time, he has no clue. So that number could even be higher. 
Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a really scary proposition if you're Rusty Harden or if you're just Deshaun Watson's agent and you want this thing to go away. There, there is no guarantee it does. I definitely need your take on this, Dan, because I've kind of commented on it and I don't know if I've got completely 100% good footing to be able to have the take that I have. It came out in that Jenny Brentis reporting that the Texans, when one of the masseuses that had taken care of uh, Deshaun Watson took a couple of shots via social media saying, I could blow up your life. I could say these things about you that Deshaun went to the team and said, Hey, I think I'm in a spot of trouble here. And one of their security officers said, well, here, take these copies of NDAs. And when you have a masseuse come over, make sure you get them to sign this ahead of time. So you don't get yourself in trouble. Not where I thought it was going to go from a Texans response, but that's what they did. That's what's being reported. Of course, uh, Busby then jumps on and says, oh, we might amend these suits to include the Texans as a potential uh, uh, accomplice here to uh, actions that shouldn't have been taken. Did the Texans screw this up by handing them NDAs and going, here, use these to protect yourself. You can use something down below, but as far as paperwork goes, <laughs> use this as, N as NDA to keep yourself from getting in trouble. How Did the Texans make a mistake legally? Um, they made a mistake in the court of public opinion because there's a paper trail, right? What the Texans knew or didn't know, I think, was in question for a while. And I was mentioning to you guys these three first-round picks that the Houston Texans got from the Browns. If it comes out that the Houston Texans knew more than they were letting on, right? We, we've seen this. I know you guys are baseball fans. We've seen trades unwound in, in baseball history when someone knows more about someone's medical records than they let on and a trade gets unwound. Um, I don't think that's going to happen here. I just think it's it's the NFL. They, don't, they wouldn't do that. But there could be a potential punishment um, for the Texans, right, from Roger Goodell. Uh, and Jody, not to mention, right, the Texans are, are going to be brought into this lawsuit, according to the the, the plaintiff, uh, the, the lawyer for the plaintiffs. They're going to be brought in. Um, I'm not exactly sure what cause of action I researched a little bit in Texas. It's probably something called a civil conspiracy that they kind of aided and abetted Watson in the, in his commission of these incidents. Yeah. Watson has testified that this NDA was provided to several masseuses. So the Texans created this NDA. They put him up in a hotel room, this uh, so-called Houstonian. Sounds very fancy. They gave him yeah. some massage supplies. I have no idea what that means, but that's in the reporting. <laughs> Sounds facetious, but, you know, um, you know that's, that's the reporting here, that the Texans were somehow involved in this and that they knew more than they were letting on. And, um, you know, Jody, the guy that put this uh, alleged NDA in his locker is a former Secret Service member. Sounds yeah. Yeah. kind of shady and all this. So, yeah, the Texans, uh, you know, Jody, you asked if they made a mistake. The paper trail is clear, right? The yeah. NDA ended up in his locker. Why does it end up in his locker? Because someone was on Instagram claiming to kind of out uh, Deshaun Watson. And that's the exact kind of nucleus of these cases here. So, you know, um, we didn't we didn't mention it, guys. But Goodell is on Capitol Hill tomorrow testifying in this commander's case. He's yeah, got a, he's got a couple things to weigh here. The Watson punishment, the Dan Snyder punishment. All of a sudden, things are kind of chaotic in NFL circles. So, you know, it, it was a, it was kind of a quiet offseason for Roger. And now he's got to deal with it. Two, uh, two yeah. Well, but before I get to the commanders, because I want to get to that with you, Dan, as well. I do it because there's so many layers to this Watson case. And I want to go to uh, the prosecutor down in Houston, Kim Og and. I guess they gave Rusty Harden the ability to give some kind of cat packet to the grand jury. That became a controversy as well. Some people get to do it. I've seen other lawyers in Houston say, no, it's pretty common. Um, Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk, though, made a big deal out of it. Is, that, is it common uh, to be able to do that as a defense attorney? And does it change depending on venue. So I, I saw the reporting and I listened to an interview that Kim did maybe uh, a week ago. Um, we'll, we'll say she, she claims that it's common in her, in her department. Um, what I know that what seemed a little odd, we heard comments from Tony Busby, the attorney for the plaintiffs, that he did not feel he was getting the same level of access to the DA's office during these proceedings. So sure, it could be common, right, that there's a packet that's provided to uh, the grand jury from the defense counsel. And I, I'll take her word for it that that's common over in, in her you know, in her county. Um, but you'd think there should be a, an even distribution of, um, we'll say, access to the DA's office. 
And Tony Busby, he had an interesting comment, uh, as uh, I think I've told you guys, Tony Busby makes public statements on Instagram, which is, which yeah. is very odd. But um, he said he was hometown in his home in his own state. Right. He's he's a Texas lawyer. He feels that uh, Rusty Harden got one up on him in his home state, which he didn't feel was appropriate. And I think a lot of people ask the question, right? You subpoenaed, um, you know, all these different people to the grand jury. You had 10 of the accusers that were allegedly in the room next door, ready, ready and willing and able to speak to the grand jury. And the reporting that's out there, again, from The New York Times, Jenny Varentis, is that only one was uh, called to speak in front of the grand jury. Of, of these, you know, 10 people that have filed criminal complaints, only one actually spoke to the grand jury. I can't really make sense of that if they're all literally in the room next door. Just bring them in, right? What's the rush? Have, do the, have the grand jury for another day if you really need it. So, um, you know, uh, you speak to enough lawyers, especially in Texas, they think that, um, you know, maybe this was, uh, uh, you know, it's speculation because we're not going to, no one's in the room. These grand jury proceedings are secret, but that maybe the fix was in, so to speak, that the, um, you know, the prosecutor's office had made up their mind ahead of time. There is a uh, police officer associated with this investigation who testified uh, at a deposition that she believes that a yeah. crime was committed by Deshaun Watson. So a lot of uh, loose ends here, we'll say. All right, uh, Dan, I'm going to jump over because we only got so much time left with you to uh, the owner of the commanders down there in Washington and his uh, uh, employee, Roger Goodell, who, oh, by the way, is being called in front of a Senate House subcommittee uh, and is planning on showing something that apparently Dan Snyder is not going to do. This is why Roger Goodell gets paid $50 million because he, when the call comes down, the owner doesn't want to go. Guess who's got to <laughs> go in front of the Senate, Roger? That'd be you. Um, how ugly could this get? Uh, is is Snyder's ownership of the commanders in jeopardy in your eyes? You know, it's funny. Like Roger Goodell is kind of like Captain America, but the shield is like the NFL logo. He just he just blocks everything, right? Um, so I I don't think Dan Snyder's not really that much trouble for the House Oversight Committee. He hasn't been subpoenaed, so this whole nonsense will he or won't he come? It was a voluntary basis. So Dan Snyder, if I'm his attorney, I'm telling him do not show up unless you are subpoenaed to go. They can call him at a different time. So we'll see what Goodell says. I think he's going to, you know, um, it's, he's not going to plead the fifth, but it's the same concept. He's just going to say, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I wasn't working at Washington uh, HQ. Um, but we'll see. I mean, the, there's very harsh comments towards Snyder that he has something to hide. And those are comments from politicians. So it seems like it's an inevitable an inevitability that he's going to get subpoenaed to testify. So tomorrow, within 24 hours, we're going to have uh, Roger Goodell's testimony uh we're going to be actually live streaming that on our show doing a little bit of manning cast um but uh <laughs> you know, it should be fun um but guys listen you guys want me to come back on mac mac and lust we sound like a really uh qualified law <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Well, at least Get one of in. us is qualified that'd be yeah. you dan hey, you, we're, we're just making it up as we go along yeah. here oh, come on, mac hey, and mac. i love talking yeah. shop with you guys you, well, you, they, uh, we're get me in with get before. me in with Garagos. That that's not the the worst place to be, Dan. Hey, you you tell me when. I'll 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 make the hookup over here. Um, uh, with you know, as a lawyer, I want to get your thoughts on the uh, politicians and you know, what the heck are they doing? I mean, uh, what 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 is the goal? What is trying to be accomplished other than you know Daniel Snyder's in France and he's not going to do it virtually, so you can, um stain an already stained reputation i mean it can't go much lower anyway but as far as the actual nuts and bolts of workplace environment what what's trying to be accomplished by this committee um only a side story because you guys are big in the philly market do you remember that lawsuit way back when when lenny dykstra sued someone for defamation and a judge ruled that your character and reputation is so low lenny yeah. <laughs> it's not possible for you to be defamed yeah. you are you are that low on the totem pole uh, Snyder is in that territory. He, yeah. he certainly is. Um, you know, I, I, I think certainly there are more important things to worry about in our country for politicians to care about than what was going on at Washington HQ. There are no shortage of politicians speaking up and saying, what are you guys doing? Why are you making this a, such a high priority? I think that's fair. Um, you know, I, I think that w when politicians do most things, I don't think people like you or I care. There is no uh, there's no sports radio that gives a gives a darn about like you know, the tax reform and the education bills. And I think part of them in Washington, especially with the hometown team, right, the Washington commanders, that they think that they're going to get more attention on themselves. And I think maybe it's, you know, somewhat of a political move just to get the type of a hot button sports issue. Uh, do I think it's a, you know, an A-level deal for them? What's going on at Washington Commanders HQ that has something that happened five, 10 years ago? 
Not really. Um, you know, I'll just I'll just be honest. A lot of these statute of limitations has passed, but I think it is applying pressure to the NFL, um, and I think that's what they're doing. I think it's not really an important political thing, right? What's going on from a uh, labor and employment perspective at a potential private employer? Yes, it's a sports entity. Yes, it's a billion dollar entity, the Washington Commanders. Um, but I think that what they're trying to do is apply pressure to the NFL uh, and maybe get in some new ownership uh, in with the uh, in with Washington. I think if you apply that much pressure to that team, uh, everyone can see that the uh, you know attendance numbers are down, fan support is down in Washington. I think that's what yeah. they're trying to do to to try to make a statement in Washington that you can't do this within uh, you know our nation's capital. Um, so that's that's my read on it because I don't think it has that much importance from a political level. Just just be speaking honestly. And the amazing thing is, meanwhile the commanders are trying to get themselves a new stadium you don't have enough brush fires going on you want to start another one by asking for tax breaks for a new stadium hey it's, it's not working it's the, those those bills are getting pulled they were supposed to be getting a couple million from virginia they yeah. pulled that um i and i think these whole stories right i've gone on with you guys before sports law bingo right sexual harassment toxic workplace these guys have every potential lawyer every practice area is being hit up at this point and it's hurting the valuation of the franchise. So, you know, maybe Washington's got to step up here. Maybe yeah, that's We talk about say. checking the boxes. Usually we're talking about roster construction, not uh, sports law bingo. If you're checking the boxes, yeah. that's not a good thing. You got to get into that... yeah, Vince McMahon as well, Dan. You know, oh. Vince is in... Uh... Vince is in some trouble Jeez. as well. Check you guys, you guys know I'm uh, not so closeted WWE fan, right? You know, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. You're, now, better than the three man lost uh, group we got going here, we certainly got a three man wrestling crew if you're a WWE guy. All right, last one for me, Dan, and we, we, we're going to let you run. Um, two different cases, one in, in the National Football League, one in baseball. Um, we're not even going to go into the Angelos dispute between siblings dealing with a father who's still in a picture but isn't up to making decisions anymore. Just a stone-cold nightmare for the Orioles. But we got the same thing in the NFL with the Spanoses, that brother versus sister and misogynistic claims by the sister against the brother. The NFL is a billion-dollar business. They're trying to keep the engine going and making all this money. The last thing they need is infighting between family members with one of their two entities. How difficult is this to deal with in the NFL? If you're another team, do you not even worry about it or look at it and go, hey, not my team. They can fight all they want. Doesn't bother me if you're Goodell who has to be the referee for this stuff. How big is it a mess when they have this type of thing going on in the NFL, in fighting, in family with one of the team ownerships? Yeah, I, I think personally, and I've, I've been on record saying this, I think the Chargers are the next team to be sold in the NFL. I think this is a le very legitimate claim. Do I think it matters for the other 31 NFL owners what's going on with Chargers? No. But then again, right, the Broncos just sold for, you know, four and a half billion dollars. So I think people pay attention. A team like the Los Angeles Chargers in that hot market of Los Angeles, that might reset the market, right? That might sell for five billion. Who knows, right? That's like funny money at a certain point. Uh, the very uh, elevator 30 seconds on, on the, the Spano stuff. Sister claims that the uh, the team is being run unprofitable and it's uh, operating in the red. And because the team is owned in part in trust, a small portion of the team, that's not really, you know, Dean Spanos' call whether or not the team is sold. If the team is operating in the red, it's going to be the, uh, you know, the purview of a trustee judge to make the decision of whether or not the team needs to be sold. Same deal would happen with um, uh, Donald Sterling way back when. A judge said yeah. that he was not mentally fit to run a team. So he declared that the team had to be sold. The judge there. Same thing could happen here if, if you know, by the books, the Chargers are, are being run into the ground and they're operating in the red. A trustee judge might say that, hey, 36 percent of the team, I think that's the number the trust owns, has to be sold. And then all of a sudden, somebody else not named Spanos will own a percentage of the team. Um, and that valuation might you know, might force other owners to consider selling, whether it be Dan Snyder or whether it be, uh, you know, some somebody else. I think they're paying attention to that because the NFL is a league about making money. And when these teams are sold nowadays, people are making hand over fist billions of dollars. So I think they're paying attention to that story very closely. Uh, he is at Sports Law Lust. Dan Lust, always a pleasure to have you, buddy. Uh, appreciate it. These 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 issues can be very difficult. And you see, we never have uh, <laughs> there's an endless supply, which is good for you. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. How much, how much controversy this league generates and sports as a whole. You mentioned golf. We mentioned Vince. It's unbelievable. So you got a lot of work to do. 
Uh, we we do, but we have a lot of fun doing it. And listen, we didn't even get into the PGA and live stuff. I could do another hour on that. We have, we have yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. This is an NFL show. Uh, Mike Gates got on uh, one of my radio shows, and we'll be able to talk about that. The only thing I'm going to apologize for today is having you on after Father's Day. Should have had you on before so you could tell your father in law that I send my regards. Uh, hopefully, you had a good Father's Day with him over the weekend. Dan, thanks much for jumping in with us. My pleasure, guys. Anytime. Thanks, Dan. Dan Lust, uh, sports attorney here with us on Birds 365. And yes, there are some situations in the NFL that are a stone cold mess. John, how many of these legal situations has actually hurt the league financially where the evaluation Zero. of teams are- Zero. Never Zero. seems to go the other way, despite the fact that it may look ugly and seem ugly and feel ugly. Somehow the arrow just keeps going up and up and up and up and up when it comes to yeah. people. People NFL. have a lot of angst about the NFL, but they don't turn it off. No, and they're always happens. watching, and, and you know they're, they're always uh, churning money. All right, he's John McMahon. I'm Jody McDonald. We are your Mac and Mac Birds 365 guys. Hey, hit that like button. Dan Lust did a hell of a job for you right there, giving you the inside scoop on the legalities of the National Football League. Give us a helping hand. Hit that like button. We'll come back, put a bow on the show here on Birds 365. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24 7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on that can you search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. In Philadelphia, we celebrated the miracle with pride only five years ago. And then the following morning, IBEW Local 98 members went back to work, building this city, rescuing our communities from decay, and inspiring the young men and women of the region to take pride in who we are. Like the cats, Local 98 members believe in hope. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities with Local 98, visit us, ibew98.org. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. The glass is for cocktails, right? It's for this, this, this. And that. Is the length of the glass equal to your... You betcha. But is it made out of... Glass? Okay, but is the rim... Smooth? Will you stop doing... That? I'm the professional here. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. All from the company that's highly awarded. Zero cars, zero sugar, and deliciously tasting vodka. So good, it just disappears. All right, coming back here on uh, Mac and Mac Park 365. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, this is show number 301. We mentioned that yesterday. John and I did our 300 show. Um, John misses some shows because he's got to go cover the Eagles. He's usually up on as a guest, uh, but he won't be in my co-host chair. 
I missed one show because I overslept once and I'm still taking <laughs> flack for it. On the Every economy. day. Every day, Jody. <laughs> so he's got, oh, Jody up yet? Yeah. Uh, but for out of the 300 shows that Birds 365 have done, it's been John and myself about 290 times. Uh, and it's a show 301. The, the stateside vodka commercial airs at least love, twice. Yeah, I love, I love that. Every thing. single hour on this show. And uh, so I've seen 900 of these commercials, and I still laugh every time the guy goes, I'm the professional here. I'm such a sucker for that commercial. Anyway, um, Johnny Mac, do want to get this in before we get out of here? I meant to ask Chris Frank on this, so I'm just going to have to settle for asking you. Not that I'm really settling. Yeah, it's a what settle. Are you, what are you going to be doing Saturday at 3 o'clock? Saturday at 3 o'clock. Is that USFL playoffs? That, that would a... be correct. The uh, Philadelphia Stars. Yeah who haven't played a game within a thousand miles of Philadelphia this year <laughs> are in the end the USFL playoffs uh, against the Jersey general. This is supposed to be a great rivalry. The generals and the yeah. stars Jersey yeah. and Philadelphia only they've been playing in Alabama all year long. And now they're going to be facing off in Canton, Ohio. Yeah. They're moving the playoffs to the hall of fame stadium out in Canton. I guess Jersey went nine and one and Philadelphia went six and four. Four of the eight teams in the USFL made the playoffs. So they sliced the league in half to get the playoffs ready. So there's no real intricacy yeah. to it. The two teams who finished one, two and one uh, conference. I think it's North and South as a matter of fact. Uh, so they ran one, two in the North. There'll be two teams from the South Birmingham. I think Birmingham went like nine and one, two. Yeah, Same they were Jersey. dominant, Birmingham. They were 8-0 at one point, and they really? probably lost they, one. Yeah. I think they finish up 9-1. Uh, and one Mercury and Morris like, could uh, rest uh, easy. Uh, the New Orleans Breakers went 6-4. and four. It's funny because it's a 9-1 and one against 6-4 and four on both halves of the bracket, the, the North and the South. But the Philadelphia Stars looking to pull the upset against the Jersey Generals this week. Will you be tuned Saturday at 3 o'clock, Johnny Mac? If I remember, you're going to have to remind me on Friday. I might tune in. My wife will probably have me doing something, but I'll try to check in on the. You know, it is interesting. You say they haven't played within a thousand miles. I don't, you know, in Birmingham. They're going to be Canton's about 400. So yeah, they're going to be cut down the distance. They, yeah. they, they might actually get three people from Philadelphia to show yeah, up and watch yeah. the game. You know, I would have gone to the games if they played here. Um, and it would have been more interesting. Um, but, you know, nah, my short answer, probably not. Not much. But, you know, I hope they win. Uh, they're not. They're never going to be, and we're going to have Paul Domowicz tomorrow on the show. He's a USFL uh, guy. Yeah, he's a USFL guy. He's got the a real book. USFL. Yeah, not the real, exactly. And the, the real, and the real Philadelphia Stars, which were a really good team in Dama is writing a book on Sam Mills. He's going in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. That's where it all started for Sam. Um, the Philadelphia Stars and Jim Mora, they had a great team. Yeah, this is not the same Stars, but, um, eh, you know, it's Philadelphia. Go Stars. Go okay. Stars, Jody. Put Damo to the test, see if he'll be watching on Saturday. Uh, so, yeah, Damo's going to join us tomorrow. We'll work up another guest. Thanks to Dan Lust and Chris Franklin for hopping on with us today. I hope you enjoyed the show. For those of you on the stream who decided to take pot shots at me today, I kind of took some pot shots at them. So, hey, yeah. if, you, if you're going to give even. it, you got to be able to take it. I, I appreciated the back and forth. Thank you very much, uh, especially Dominique. Uh, who blatantly overrated the uh, Jakarta. Uh, I can't wait to see the reincarnation of Ronnie Lott. I can't wait. He's coming here with all 10 fingers, so watch out for what he's going to be able to do for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, partner, I say we do this for the 302nd time tomorrow. You in? Let's do it. More, more tart hate. <laughs> Tart, tart love. More tart love mm. than tart hate. Yeah, they think we're giving them hate. No, we like Jaquiski Tart, too. Just not as much as some of you Eagle fans. Uh, you will get more of this right here on Birds 365 tomorrow in 2-2. Two and two. You've been listening to Birds 365. <laughs> 
the destination for the passionate Eagles football fan who bleeds green. If it's Eagles football, we're talking about it. Debate inside the locker room and guests that are some of the greatest football minds from around the region. We hope you enjoyed the show. We know we had a blast. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hook up with us on social media at Jacob Sports. See you next time on Birds 365.